everybody, this is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles bringing you another exciting video. In this video, I'm gonna be exploring a little bit about my comings and goings, things that are happening in the jewelry world, and some of the content that I have planned for my future. Bring on some of my books and some items of jewelry for you to take a look at, and all things related to the jewelry world. The jewelry history to jewelry collections, jewelry book reviews, and jewelry detective work. So if that's your jam, stick with me. And you know what? Let's just get this video started. In the last video, I shared with you that I subscribe to Ornamental uh, Magazine. And it's a great magazine for a lot of content, especially as it relates to um, museums, because it updates you on all the different museums, not only locally, but throughout the world. And as I was perusing the book in the back of the book, it's a booklet, it's a 16 page illustrated booklet about how to photograph your jewelry. And so I am considering going into the resale market. So for those people who um, ask me if I sell my jewelry, I'm considering it. I'm not sure if it's something that I really wanna do just yet because it requires me parting with my babies and dedicating a whole block of time to selling when I really wanna dedicate myself to this channel. But this 16 page illustrated booklet tells you how to take pictures of your jewelry. It is designed for museum curators, uh, people who are in the magazine industry, and resellers of jewelry, because it tells you how to film and also to take pictures of jewelry and miniature little objects. I think to be a jewelry aficionado, that means looking at all different facets of jewelry, including how to film it and put it on um, pictures. So I'm looking forward to that. I'd love for those resellers out there to chime in and tell me your thoughts about the jewelry resale industry as it is today. I have dedicated my free time in my life to jewelry and all different facets of jewelry. So I also started to explore jewelry podcasts because I drive about an hour commute. That's a long, long commute. And thankfully, I only do it two, no more than three days a week, but that's quite enough for me. And so I wanna be productive with my time. And so while I'm out there driving my car, I started um, listening to some jewelry podcasts and I was considering maybe, maybe a podcast might be something that I'd be interested in looking into. So if there's any podcasters out there, if you can give me some tips and ideas, some uh, points, some good points, maybe some bad points about creating a podcast. And I was considering doing possibly a podcast on jewelry mysteries or jewelry detective, um, where I dig in deep about a particular piece of jewelry. The issue with that is that podcasts are more audio and so jewelry is such a visual thing so how can I tell the story about jewelry uh, without having to show the piece so that's the disconnect I have and so if you think that I can still pull it off without having to show pictures uh, let me know uh, and uh, and if I did do a podcast would that be something that you guys would be interested in taking a listen to I'd love to hear your feedback Bad Bunny is uh, pretty much fully recuperated. Um, I had to incorporate hay into her diet. And so um, to get her digestive system working, they need that hay. And she refused to eat the hay because I was giving her too much of the good stuff, the stuff that she wants to eat. And it's like giving a kid a candy and cakes and sweets all day long without giving them the subsidence food that they need the nutritious food that they need to sustain themselves. And so Bad Bunny is furious with me because I put her on a diet. So here's a little clip of me and Bad Bunny. Hi everyone, this is Miss Pamela. She's doing phenomenal. As you can see, she's feisty, which is great because that means she's got her health back. She's doing phenomenal. 
And I want to thank everyone, and she wants to thank everyone for wishing her well. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. She wants to thank everybody for wishing her well, and she's doing phenomenal. Miss Pamela, dear, is back to her normal, healthy self, and that makes me really, really happy. Say hi, Mommy. Say hi, Mommy. <laughs> Everyone, Miss Pamela. Oh my gosh, look what I have here. I have several books and I want to share with you um, this new exhibit that's going to be entering into the Museum of Natural History on May 9th, I believe it is. That's the opening night. And it stays on for a couple of weeks or so, maybe even a couple of months. But this museum exhibit is perhaps one of the nearest and dearest exhibits that I probably would ever, ever see at any of the museums I've ever been to. Um, I, well, as I committed myself to um, jewelry history and dedicating more time and effort and energy into this content, um, share with you some personal stories and personal memories that I had growing up here in the Bronx and in New York City. And I think that perhaps this is probably the one that I'm super duper excited over. And the exhibit is called Ice Cold. And it's in reference to this book right here. These books I actually purchased within the last year because I am fascinated about hip hop culture and hip hop jewelry specifically. And I purchased these books because I wanted to do a series and content as it relates to hip hop culture and hip hop history because um, it is very, very specific to New York City history but even more specific than that, it's related to Bronx history. And as my YouTube channel uh, moniker is Bronx Bobbles. So I'm a Bronx girl. I left the Bronx in the mid eighties and I went out to Long Island, which is still New York. Um, and I lived in the suburbs for 35 plus years. And I then came back to the Bronx for many reasons. I wanted to, um, I felt, I loved Long Island. Long Island has beautiful beaches. It's suburbia. I don't know, I see that bunny, she's so cute. Hi, mommy. You wanna come visit? Oh, what a sweet little girl. She's so curious, I love it. She's back to her normal self. Hi. <laughs> Came back to the city to explore, um, more of the cultural significances that are here in the city and have easy access to the museums, which is what I love, to the stores, to the flea markets, and things that I like to do in the city. Um, and I came specifically back to the Bronx because I do have a love, an affinity for the Bronx where I grew up at. Hip hop culture is incredibly important to me. I think what appealed to me the most about hip hop culture is that it brings me back to the late 70s and early 80s when hip hop was being born. And I felt like I was a spectator in that development of that culture. Um, I used to go to the block parties. I used to watch the b-boys dance. In fact, my brothers were um, b-boys. I would go to the block parties. I'd go to the house parties where you pay to get in and listen to the DJ, spin their records. Um, I watched some of the famous people when they were, in their, when they were young boys um, turning the table, like Charlie Chase and Cool Herc. And um, I watched the Rocksteady crew break dance. And back then, people didn't fight with their fists or guns and knives. They fought with dancing. And so I had a love for that whole culture. And when I found out the Museum of Natural History was exhibiting the Ice Cold exhibit, which was brought on by Slick Rick, he, um, I was 
I I knew that I have to have to go to to this exhibit. Um, I recently um, last year my brother came and visited, and he was a bit of a b boy. He used to wear his Kango and his Adidas, and he would wear his Gazelle glasses, and he would hang out in the corners, be bopping with his friends. He was a he was a bit of a singer, and so he was a beat bopper, and um, and so he wanted to visit the museum, and so me, my daughter, and him went. And here is a couple of pictures that I took of the hip hop pop up museum, which was situated at the Bronx Market Terminal. It's a temporary space um, because they are in the process of creating the hip hop museum right here in the Bronx where it all started. So take a look at some of these pictures and <laughs> me uh, trying to dance a little hip hop, which it's a little embarrassing, but here we go. So this book here is um, by Tashin. It's a hip hop jewelry history. And um, here is a couple of pictures. Here is Tupac Shakur from the 1990s. Check out these hip hop artists from the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s. This is um, Birdman right here. And we have some female artists. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. And um, I just love this whole idea of this culture. I think it's fascinating. I think there's significant information and history and even a little bit of detective work with some of these um, jewelry um, because some of it has very symbolic significance um, like the Ankh that they wear, um, name chain culture, which here is this book. It's called The Nameplate, Jewelry, Culture, and Identity. And it talks about nameplate culture um, and I'm halfway through creating the content specifically for this video and so for my viewers out there if you have your nameplate I would love for you to send me a picture to Jackie Bronx Bobbles at gmail.com and I will be happy to add your picture to the video that I'm creating on the nameplate but one of the things I need you to do is tell me the story of your name and also how you acquired the necklace. If you can do that for me, I would be extremely ecstatic to include you on the video. And then we have, oops, we have this book, which is called Bling, the Hip Hop Jewelry Book by Reggie Also and Gabrielle Tolivier. And this is a short, mostly pictures about the hip hop artists wearing their name of jewelry. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, these rappers get a bad rap about all the gaudy jewelry that they wear. And for some of you who might remember, my name was called Titi Gaudi for a long, long time. They still call me Titi Gaudi. And um, these guys are no different than Liberace, than Elizabeth Taylor, than King Tut, and all these other people who wore jewelry as a statement to making it in the world. And so, um, uh, oh, look at this, name earrings. My sister had a name earring like this, exactly like this. Um, and I had a name ring exactly like this. So this is a great book for those people who are interested in, in that. And I have one more book here, and this is called Bling Bling. Hips Hop Crown Jewels, Manaya O, and forward by Ludacris. And um, here is a couple of pictures of some of the artists. Oh, wow, I remember her. And it talks about these rope chains, 
and these bamboo earrings and how hip hop jewelry came into New York City by way of the Bronx and other boroughs like Brooklyn and Queens and Staten Island and Manhattan. And um, it came in through a lot of the Caribbean uh, families who had to carry their wealth with them um, because they couldn't put their monies in banks. They actually had to carry their wealth um, and some of them also carried it in their, in their mouth and, um, and they wore gold teeth which turned into the famous grills. Um, so there's a lot of stories and history um, as it relates to hip hop. And I think that one of the reasons why I'm fascinated with this culture was is because I feel like I had a front row seat to the evolution and the creation of an entire culture that is spread throughout all of the United States and into Europe. So it started right here in the Bronx. And so as a Bronxite and um, as a jewelry history, these are the things that matter a lot to me, especially since I was a part of this, um, I was a part of this world in a small degree. Um, so I can't wait to that exhibit May 9th. I'm even considering taking the day off just to attend the first day and maybe, maybe I could spot one of the stars and bring these books with me and maybe, maybe they'll even sign it for me. So wish me luck, see if there's something I can do. And what do you guys think about hip hop culture? I am humbled and pleased at the fact that I am literally this close to my 1,000 subscribers. I know I shared that information with you on the last video and a bunch of you subscribed and brought me a little bit closer to the 1,000. I think this morning I checked I was 989 subscribers. So all I need is 11 more subscribers. Come on guys, please press that subscription button. Get me to the 1,000 because that'll be a huge milestone. And I can tell you that getting to that 1,000 milestone of subscribers is what's putting the fuel and fire in my desire. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> oh, that could be a hip hop song. Um, to produce more content for you. So if you haven't already, it makes a difference. 11 more subscribers get me to the 1,000. And I plan to do a few giveaways. I have to set it up and I'll tell you a little bit more about what they entail. So help a sister out, hit that subscribe button. I feel that the content that I provide is unique. There's not a lot of people, if any, that do what I do. I share a jewelry history. I um, specifically delve into the cultural and ethnic jewelry. Um, I bring a little bit of New York flair because I have access to go to these museums and these flea markets and these special events and things like that um, that not everybody has access to. So I bring you into that world and bring you on my adventures. Uh, I want to share more with you about what's happening in my personal life uh, so that um, so you can relate to me a little bit more. I think it's because of that that I consider myself a jewelry historian. And as a historian, um, I'm not an expert. Um, and when people say that they're an expert, I get a little cringy about it because um, there's so much to learn about jewelry. There's so much out there. And there's so many different areas that you can divulge into when it comes to jewelry history. You can talk about the ethnic part of it. You can talk about the construction. You can talk about the resale part of it. You can talk about the brand name of it, the different materials, gemstones, and detective work, and mysteries about jewelry, and famous collectors. There's so many different um, decades and eras of jewelry and how it relates to people's uh, cultures and politics. and 
there's no possible way that any one person can be an expert in all. You might be an expert in a certain genre or field of jewelry, um, but even then, I'm sure that it's always evolving and ever changing. And so I don't like to call myself a jewelry expert. I, console, I consider myself a jewelry historian and a jewelry enthusiast, a jewelry collector, maybe one day jewelry vendor, um, I like to consider doing podcasting, reselling, maybe even author a book. Um, I like to do some appraisals and work with different um, maybe TV shows and movies and collaborate with other like-minded jewelry aficionados. Uh, these are the things that really excite me. And it's always evolving, it's always a learning experience. I learned so much through jewelry. I learned a lot about humanity, politics, history, uh, culture, so much through jewelry. And I think my love for jewelry will never wane um, because uh, I've been doing this since I was like nine or 10 years old. And it's just, in fact, my enthusiasm for jewelry has, has increased even. Um, so one of the things that I'm hoping that you can help me with as viewers and um, is let me know what is it about my content that attracts you to come back and watch my show uh, what is it that you would like to see more of in my content and even what would you like to see less of for example my sister Denise tells me that she didn't like the video where I was repairing the jewelry she just wasn't into it She'd rather hear the histories and those inspirational stories and the the um, and the, the halls and, and things like that. And then I have other friends who say they want to see more collaborations. And then I have other friends who say I just want to see the halls and you going into flea markets and and and. And, and then I have a whole genre of people who are interested in the books that I have. And so that's why I want to bring more books reviews because I have in my collection and it's not complete. I, I'm still, you know, going through uh, my book collection. Over 300 books. That's a whole lot of books, guys. <laughs> and I do on the regular futz around the house. There's books everywhere. And I sit down leaf through my books I do research um, I buy the books that I think are significant such as these books here um, that are in uh, significant to me in my content and things that I'm interested in I hope that you enjoy this so please let's open up that dialogue and I write back to every comment that everyone leaves so if you leave me a comment I write back to you and this time I'm appealing to you as it relates to my content. So give me your feedback and your thoughts about the content that I'm creating, things you wanna see and things like that. So please uh, so go ahead and leave me that comment comment, and let's, let's, let's talk. I think there was somebody I owe some jewelry to. Um, I got locked out of my account and I haven't been able to get back in. I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out a way to get back into my uh, Gmail account. My so that's it my friends. Let me know what you think. Love you, love you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. Beautiful, beautiful water. Oh my god. This is my happy place.